everyone, and welcome to Something More. I'm Donna Chavis, and I am here with a guest that has been with us a couple of times. So please welcome back to Something More, Becky Dvorak. Hi, Becky. Hi, it's <laughs> nice to be here with you again, Donna. Oh, we always love having you. Now, for those that may not know you or have seen you before, you are a healing evangelist. Tell me a little bit about your ministry. Well, I am what you say, a healing evangelist with, with the prophetess anointing as well. And I travel around the world and I do healing conferences mm -hmm. and healing seminars. And, I, and one of the things, the mandates from God that He put on me is to train the body of Christ how to heal themselves, not just to lay hands on them and see them healed, but also to train them so they know how to heal themselves yes. in the name of Jesus yes. and how to pray for other people as well. Yes. And I do, I see the blind see, the deaf hear, the mute speak, the paralytics walk, um, cancerous tumors gone. I just received a testimony um, yesterday of a woman that that she put what I, the, what I taught her mm -hmm. into practice mm -hmm. and, and she, and, and I prayed with her this is over the internet. I prayed with her and I said, now you say this. And she did and she kept saying it over herself. And that night, in one night, this is a recent testimony, mm -hmm. that very night a protruding cancerous tumor disappeared. Wow. So it works. Wow. I love that about your ministry and your teaching because you can't always go. No, you Becky, can't. Becky, you can't always go. Some people may not be able to get to a minister or a healing evangelist. Mm -hmm. And you teach people. What, what is the old saying, you know, give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day, but teach him to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime. Absolutely. So I know that's not very spiritual, but... It but is that's, spiritual. But, yeah, yeah, but that's true with what you do. Because that's what you know, Jesus did. I can he made pray disciples. for you now. I'm going to pray for you. Or I can teach you to pray. And then you've got that. You are so gifted at that. And that's one of the reasons I like your resources so much. Because it's not just you, you, you. No, you are sharing, imparting, and transferring that gifting to other people. Because everybody can't get to someone else, can they? No, but you can get to your next door neighbor and yes. I can't. Yes. But they can. Yes, exactly. Oh, my goodness, healing. Just just so many things, as you mentioned, and so much more that we definitely don't have time to talk about. But mm -hmm. what do you think are some of the most common hindrances uh, to us actually seeing manifestations of healing? Well, there are some... That there's many, but the, the most common ones that I see is number one, a lack of teaching in the body mm. of Christ concerning mm. yes. healing. Yes. Um, Hosea 4, 6 tells us that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And in this situation, a lack of knowledge that they can be healed in the name of Jesus by his redemptive blood. Yes. And it's one of those it's one of those doctrines that the enemy fears. He fears it, and, and, and there's so much division right now in the body of Christ because of it. And I always tell people in seminars, it's as if, it's as if the healing message has been thrown into a back closet. There's a locked door with an armed guard, and don't you dare go near that door. Mm -hmm. um, but if so, that's... I think the number one reason mm -hmm. for hindrances mm -hmm. as far as blocking healing. Another mm -hmm. one is we speak wrong confessions. We don't oh. know how to speak. The Bible teaches us in Proverbs 18, 21, that there's the power of life and death in every word that we speak. We are constantly prophesying either life or we're prophesying death into a situation. And there mm -hmm. is a time that we need to know how to speak death into a situation. And for an example, someone has a cancerous tumor growing in their body. Yes. They're, they're, they've been diagnosed yes. with cancer. Well, we have to use that power of death in our words mm. and we need to and we need to combat it with the spoken power of the word and say in Jesus name I renounce that spirit of yes. death I renounce that cancer I command every every cancerous cell and tumor to dry up at the seed and to and to detach itself from the root and be eliminated from this body mm. but then you can't stop there no. I mean it's like no. taking chemo or radiation and everything dies and so you have to know how to use the creative, the, the life-giving power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. And then you 
then you prophesy into your body. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, this works. It doesn't, it might sound ooky, but it's serious. Mm -hmm. It works. It's how God creates and he created us yes. in his image. Yes. And so then we, after we renounce the death and the cancer or whatever the issue is, then we have to speak life into our body. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, I mm -hmm. release the spirit of life to flow into yes. my body. Yes. I command my cells to be recreated and they are cancer free, they're mm -hmm. cancer proof, they function 100% in Jesus' name. I mean, so yes, you have yes. to That's know how phrase. to use both. That's a phrase I learned from you, renounce and replace. Yes. Renounce this and replace it with this. Yes. Oh, that, that is so good. Now you also say there are spiritual hindrances. There are. And, and the more and more I, I, I do more and more um, conferences and seminars um, with the body of Christ and I teach them how to heal and how to, how to believe God and overcome the mm. spirit of death and all of that. But there are demonic influences that are oppressing God's people and they're even possessing other people. But they're great oppressors and they're demonic spirits. And one is a spirit of death. Mm. And the spirit of death is, um, it's not to be confused with biblical death, you know, like like we read in there's Ecclesiastes. There's a time to live, there's a time to die, there's a time, yeah. Yeah, it's not that. Yeah. That's an appointed time when we have fulfilled our destiny and mm -hmm. our calling in life. Mm -hmm. And and we've reached our arena of influence in life. And, and we've fulfilled everything and we live to a ripe old age and God just takes our breath away. We don't, we don't die in, in pain and suffering. Yes. Let me stop you right there. You're saying, okay, this is what it is not. When we come back from break, I wanna talk about what it is, okay? So let's take a little break right here. We're gonna be back with more from Becky Dvorak in just a moment, so please stay with us. Welcome back everyone to Something More. We are here with Becky Dvorak and we are talking about spiritual hindrances that, that keep us from experiencing a manifestation of healing. Becky, you, you had begun to tell us about the spirit of death. Now it's not the, not the, the biblical death that, we, that it talks about when we're saying a time to live, a time to die. It's not, it, you're not talking about that. What are you talking about? The spirit of death that I'm speaking about is premature death. Mm, and yes, premature yes. death, it's usually very tragic in nature and it can be very sudden. Um, some of the signs of premature death that, that you're being attacked by, by the spirit of death would be um, a sudden um, diagnosis of an incurable or a rare disease, or you have sickness and disease that keeps reoccurring in yes. your body over yes. and over. You just can't seem to get rid of it or you have one sickness and you get over that one and another one comes, it's some, there's something spiritual going on in mm -hmm. there. And I have found it's usually a spirit of death. How about um, suicidal thoughts oh. or people that, ha that are being tormented with terroristic and murderous type of thoughts against other people, even desiring to, to abort your baby. Oh, That's mm -hmm. a spirit yeah. of death or yes. someone trying to convince yes. another person to abort their child. Yes. They have a spirit of death on them that's Ooh. operating through them. Mm. All right, and, and what about, you said uh, something that goes hand in hand with the spirit of death is fear. Fear. Fear is very powerful. And you know how like how John the Baptist was the forerunner to Jesus? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I have found that a spirit of fear is a forerunner to the spirit of death. First, first the enemy, Satan, he lies, mm -hmm. you know, and it gets deep into our into our into our thoughts and we start to dwell on these negative fearful thoughts about mm -hmm. death. Mm -hmm. And then we start speaking them. And then before you know it, we're not doing this, we're not doing that. Um, we do this, we do that because you know that might that might cause cancer. This might do this. And I'm not talking about being irresponsible, but I'm right, talking about it right. becomes such a fear. It's controlling, mm -hmm. and so I have found that fear, a spirit of fear, and God calls it a spirit of fear. Um, it's an actual spirit. It's demonic, mm -hmm. and it controls people. And I have found over and over and over again that somewhere the spirit of fear was first. Yeah, came first to the person before they receive that spirit of death. Mm -hmm. And that's a tormenting spirit.
spirit, isn't it? It is a very tormenting spirit, very much so. Yeah. I can understand how that would be a hindrance to us receiving a manifestation of our healing, getting us sidetracked, drawing our attention somewhere else, making us fear. Oh, that's strong. That is so strong. What about a familiar spirit? Okay, this is something that I've been teaching people at the seminars, and I have found it's very eye-opening for God's people mm. to talk about about these demonic influences that are oppressing God's people, and one is a familiar spirit. Now, how do I describe a familiar spirit? A familiar spirit, when it comes to sickness, it, it's, it's a family member. The sickness, the spirit behind it has become closer than a family member, closer than a spouse, closer than a best friend. And, and how do people know if they have a familiar spirit and they need to renounce it and get it off of them? Well, what do they talk about? Can they actually talk about something without bringing up their sickness and, and the disease attacking them? Yes. Do they know how to talk without it? Do they know how to live and move? Do, I mean, it's so controlling this familiar spirit when it comes to sickness and disease. It controls their every move. They don't do this. They don't do that. Everything they do is centered around that sickness and disease. That sickness and disease has been put on a throne in their life, and it's time to dethrone it. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and what's behind it is a familiar spirit. It's yeah. closer to you than a family member. Wow. I, would you take a moment right now? I just feel like there's so many people that are identifying with this. You know, as you speak about people that are so consumed with this, would you take a moment for the people that are watching and pray and renounce what you were just talking about, fear, death, familiar spirits. Let's just stop right here for a minute if you would uh, just minister to those for okay. just a moment. Well, right now in Jesus' name, I renounce that spirit of death that is that has latched on to you in Jesus' name. I command it off of you in Jesus' name. Yes. In the name of Jesus, I command it to release its tentacles around you in the name of Jesus. And, and by the word of God, we decree a separation. We cut it off from you in the name of Jesus. And in its place, we release the spirit of life to flow into your body in the name of Jesus. We renounce the, the spirit of fear that has also attached itself to you in Jesus' name. God has not given you this spirit of fear. That's from the enemy. And so we also decree, we cut it off from you in the name of Jesus, because he has given you love and power and a sound mind. And that spirit of fear is stealing those, those spiritual gifts from God from you in the name of Jesus. And they're also opening up the door for that spirit of death to come in and wreak havoc in your physical body. And I also renounce the familiarity, yes. that familiar spirit of that sickness and disease over you in Jesus name. We, you do not want to be familiar with a demon. You don't want to be constantly conversing with a demon, talking to yourself, talking to that disease, talking to other people. It's time to dethrone that familiar spirit yes, in your yes. life in Jesus name. You just say in Jesus name, I renounce you and I command you out and away from me in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Whew. Becky, that is strong. So, so important for us to know that there are these, these spiritual influences, hindrances that keep us from seeing manifestations in our healing. So let's get those out of the way, recognize them, renounce them, and get those out of the way. Thank you for that. We're going to be back with more from Becky in just a moment, so please don't go away. Welcome back, everyone, to Something More. I'm here with Becky Dvorak. And Becky, we're talking about spiritual hindrances to our healing. Tell us again, why is that so important that we learn this, that, that we get this knowledge, that we grab hold of this? Why is that so, so important? Well, because we want to break free from anything that's blocking or hindering our healing. We want mm -hmm. to receive all that God has for us. But there are things, because we live in a fallen world, mm -hmm. 
that there are things that we don't even realize, we don't understand what is actually blocking our healings from manifesting. Mm. And so it's very important to examine some of these things. Sure, sure. And one of those that, that you teach and talk about is something that, um, yes, uh, even even believers or religious people sometimes don't want to hear about, but there are religious spirits. There is, and a religious spirit is a very messy spirit. Mm. It's a very controlling spirit. And you'll, how do people know if they, if they have a religious spirit that's oppressing them, that's controlling them? How do we know that? Well, it's pretty easy because um, we have believers and then we have, yeah. then we, in, amongst those believers, we have two categories, the believing believers and the unbelieving believers. Ooh. Believing believers, meaning those that, that believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. they, they believe in, in healing and deliverances right. and the gifts right. of the Holy Spirit. And the unbelieving believers, they, they have salvation and they're satisfied with it. You know, Happy eternal life. <laughs> and, and yes, they stop there. They don't want mm -hmm. anything more. They deny the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They deny that He's even in existence yeah. today or in operating in our lives today. And and what they don't realize, it's the Holy Spirit that's living inside of us when we was, when we ask Jesus to forgive us and yes. to be yes. our Savior. Yes. It's the Holy Spirit right. that comes and resides right. within us right. because Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father yes, interceding praise. for us. <laughs> and, we, and when he ascended into heaven, he said, it's better that I go up mm -hmm. because the Comforter will come and that's the Holy Spirit. But how do we know if a religious spirit is, is hindering us? I remember as a young mama, and this was so long ago, and it's almost embarrassing <laughs> for me to even say this because of what I now walk in today. But I had no idea when, when, when I was a young, a young mom, a young wife, a young mother, and, and I received the Lord, I didn't know that I had a religious spirit. And, and, and I remember I was at this time in my life, I was pregnant with our third child. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was some complications and they thought he was going to be born prematurely. And I remember sitting, or not sitting, kneeling on my living room floor, begging God not to take my baby. Mm. I said, I'll do anything. I'll do this, I'll do that. I mean, it was ridiculous. I was bargaining with God. Yes. Don't do this as if yeah. he was the one. And yet I fully loved the Lord mm -hmm. and I was growing in my faith. Mm. But I, it was something that I didn't realize that I had a misconception of yeah. God. I didn't understand the word like I understand yeah. it today. Yeah. And I'm not saying I know all things because I don't. It's but what I, you I'm started learning. With. It's what you started with today. It was a lack of knowledge. I, yes, it was, it was a lack, a of, lack knowledge. of knowledge yeah. in that area. And the enemy wants to keep us there. Mm -hmm. I loved what you said. It scares him to death to th think that we're going to gain the knowledge to uh, conquer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So you were praying and 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 you know God didn't take my baby and any of that and and you know, he understood where I was coming mm -hmm. from. He knew that this young mama does not understand about how great he is or anything like that. But a religious spirit, I I run into them in the healing ministry mm -hmm. all the time, and they're the leaders that. They are against everything you do. I mean, they don't, it's as if they don't want the people healed. Wow. Um, you know, you, we don't talk about that. How about this one? Um, someone, someone starts whining, moaning yeah. about their back and they said, yeah. oh, my aching back and oh, uh, and, you, and you offer to pray for them. Say, I believe in healing. Can I pray for you? We don't believe in that. Oh, my. my church doesn't oh, believe my. that way. Uh, no, no, no. And they, and so they curse themselves. They hang on to the, right. onto the aching back. It's a religious spirit, and it hinders. It's wrong beliefs. It's a wrong view of God. Mm -hmm. It's a very legalistic view, and it's also a very misinformed view. Yes. They don't understand yes. that the Holy Spirit is for today. A religious spirit will will reject the power of the Holy Spirit. They'll, they'll reject praying in tongues. They reject all of that. Yeah. They're against it. Yeah, yeah. 
and that hinders, obviously, a manifestation of our healing, which we're so desperately needing and wanting and asking for. Especially when it comes to the Holy Spirit, yes. because yes. He's the creative, explosive, miracle-working yeah. power of God. Yes. And if you want to walk in the miraculous, if you desire to be healed, you need to align yourself as a as a believer in Jesus. Mm -hmm. You need to align mm -hmm. yourself with mm -hmm. the power of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know what? In about 60 seconds, will you tell me about an orphaned spirit? Because I've heard that term before. Uh, wh what is an orphaned spirit and how does that hinder us? Just to, in a few seconds here. An orphaned spirit, they, they, you don't necessarily have to be orphaned physically, but um, someone with an orphaned spirit, they oftentimes didn't have a father figure in their life mm -hmm. or you know, a parental, mm -hmm. loving, giving, um, parental father figure yes. in their life. And yes. so they have a very hard time receiving the blessings of God. They as have a the hard father. time, yes, yes, as the mm -hmm. father. Mm -hmm. And and they're, um, as being um, someone that had a children's home, I saw how an orphan spirit worked all the time. I saw I'm it sure. every day. I'm sure. And they're, they play games, they're very manipulative. They try to do things to get other people mm -hmm. to reject them. They always think someone's out to get them. Yes. And they're gonna reject them, etc. But an orphan spirit hinders us from receiving the blessings, especially healing from God, because they don't believe they're good enough. And you know what? No one's good enough. It's, exactly. it's Jesus that's, exactly. that's more than good enough. Will you pray against an orphan spirit right now so okay. that people can experience and break off that um, and, and experience the love of the Father, the blessings of the Father? Right now, in Jesus' name, I renounce that orphan spirit that is oppressing you or possessing you in the name of Jesus. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will hover over these individuals right yes. now and that they yes. will sense your love and they will be open to receiving your love and seeing you in a whole new way, that you are loving and your love is unconditional. It's not based upon behavior, what they did today, what they did yesterday, or what they didn't do in Jesus' name but it's based upon you, Father, and that they will learn to see that you are good and loving and kind to them and you have the best in your mind for them and that they will receive all that you have in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Once again, we never have enough time with you, Becky. So we can keep you all day. But this is the end of the program for this time. But please be sure to join us next time for something more. Call now and get Becky Dvorak's brand new book, Conquering the Spirit of Death, and her powerful three-part audio CD teaching series, Created to Win, plus her exclusive prophetic booklet, God's End Time Supernatural Survival Guide. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9662. Through Becky Dvorak's brand new book, Conquering the Spirit of Death, and her exclusive and anointed three-part audio CD teaching set, Created to win. You will understand how to experience and enforce the resurrection power of Jesus to overcome the devil's attacks on your life. Discover how to use the weapons of warfare that God has equipped you with to overcome everything you're facing. Understand how to prophesy life over yourself. Find out how to speak healing into every situation. Find out how to pray Psalm 91 to place God's hedge of protection over you and others. Learn how to overcome the spirit of death itself. Every chapter of the book ends with questions to help you digest the teaching and powerful prayers to help you implement God's blessings and promises for your life. On the audio CDs, Becky includes anointed prayers for you to be healed from sickness and disease, for your past visions and dreams to be resurrected and activated, for provision and financial blessings to flourish in your life. You will also receive Becky Dvorak's exclusive prophetic booklet, God's End Time Supernatural Survival Guide. Through this End Time booklet, learn how to properly discern the voice of the Lord, discover how to recognize and avoid the Understand the various ways on how God communicates with you. Find out how the power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit can transform your life. Receive clear instruction on how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The booklet includes powerful prayers and declarations to help you stay on course and be effective in your life and ministry in these days of the end times. Don't miss out on getting Becky Dvorak's brand new book, Conquering the Spirit of Death, and her powerful three-part audio CD teaching series, Created to Win, plus her exclusive prophetic booklet, God's End Time Supernatural 
Supernatural Survival Guide. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours. For a donation of $35, shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9662. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9662 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.